Archbishop Pietro pa Parolin, who is seen by most people as the second most powerful man in the Vatican behind the Pope, opened the door yesterday in a newspaper interview to the possibility of priests getting married. Seriously. He said, quote, celibacy is not an institution. But look, it's also true that you can discuss it because, as you say, this is not a dogma, a dogma of the church, end of quote. In other words, priests being single and celibate is not a dogma, an absolute, unbreakable, God-given rule, but rather simply the policy of the Catholic Church. And policies can be changed. The Catholic Church allowing priests to marry would be a huge step forward toward a number of positive worldwide revolutions. Science tells us that the single, the single most significant difference between a country where the population is running out of control versus one where the population is stable, the single most important variable is the empowerment of women. We also know that societies where women have significant political power are less likely to engage in warfare or to have huge imbalances in wealth between the top and the bottom, and more likely to have strong social safety nets, a better quality of life, and less illiteracy and poverty. It would not be an exaggeration to say that the empowerment of girls and women through education and political power is the single most important thing that can be done to save the world. Global warming, famine, war, all remedied in large part by the empowerment of women. And the Catholic Church's role in this is important because it's the single largest religious institution in the world. With over a billion members, it's Catholic, the Catholic Church and its leader, the Pope, wield enormous political and moral authority. I mean, the Vatican is recognized as a nation by the U.N., up until now, this largest religious institution in the world, this nation-state, has been organized along entirely patriarchal and male-dominated lines. To become fully modern, I mean, if you know, the Catholic Church was really going to step into the 21st century, they'd have to allow women priests and even a woman pope, which is pretty unlikely in the near future. But allowing priests to marry... To bring a woman into a co-equal relationship with a priest in their household is a powerful and important first step in breaking down the absolute male domination of the Catholic Church. In my lifetime, I've seen it happen in several Protestant denominations. And it's been an important step toward a better and more egalitarian world. We saw it happen with Lutherans. We saw it happen with... Uh, uh, the Methodists did it a long, long time ago. Anyway, if the Catholic Church were to just take this step this small first step of allowing their priests to marry, it would actually be a huge step towards saving the world from the toxic consequences of millennia, thousands of years of male domination. Pope Francis has surprised the world in so many ways. I mean, this week we learned that he was given a 30-year-old used small car by another priest because he likes to drive himself around. He loves to be with the people and often sneaks out to do so, driving his security detail crazy. He's called out the rich of the world for their role in spoiling our planet and exploiting their workers. He's called for stronger national social safety nets to raise up the world's poor. He's spoken out strongly against war, including against America involving itself in the civil war in Syria. He's even said he would not judge gay priests. If he were to begin a conversation in the Vatican about allowing priests to get married, it could quite literally change the world. So my thought for the day, I'm not Catholic, so I guess I don't, you know, I can't speak from any kind of authority within the church or even as a member of the church, but I do know the importance of the role of women in the world, and I do know, it's obvious to all of us, the Catholic Church. I mean, I don't know if this is still the case, but when Pope John Paul II invited me to come over, invited Louise and I, to come over to Rome and meet him at Castle Gandolfo for a private uh, audience, it was an amazing trip. And the first day that we got there, uh, the, the day before we went up to Castle Gandolfo, we were in Rome, 
and we went to the Vatican, which is like, you know, this city-state outside of Rome, right next, to, right next door to Rome. And the Pope's assistant, you know, one of his assistants, one of his right-hand guys, uh, spent the day with us, gave us a tour through the Vatican and all these little, you know, back alleys and secret rooms and see this old art that, you know, isn't available to the public. And it was really pretty amazing. But the thing that I got out of that, I, I, that, that kind of stuck with me for a long, long time, was that at that time, the Vatican had something like 870 residents. It was the only country in the United Nations who had no women as citizens, as full citizens, that only men were full citizens. Now, they may have changed that since then and allowed the nuns to become full citizens or women who live in the Vatican. Um, but I thought that was pretty, I was startled, I was shocked by that, frankly. And to see the Catholic Church go through that kind of a reform, this, this, this would be an amazing thing. Just an amazing thing. This is, this is the, it, it, it's actually, this is the, the, the turning point. This is the, you know, the empowerment of women is probably the major battle that's going on in many Islamic republics and countries. The countries that are largely Muslim. Is you've got the people who are trying to push women back into the burqa. And then you've got more modern states where they're trying to bring women back into the mainstream of society and empower women. And there's a very, very real debate being held in the Muslim world, all around the world, about that issue. I would love to see that debate happen inside the Catholic Church. I would love to see that, that debate happen inside the Vatican. And this Pope might be the guy to do it. I mean, this guy has... You know, yeah, I know the you know the Catholic Church. They've got some wackadoodle policies, but this fellow, Pope Francis, has said some just ex and done some really truly extraordinary things. I mean, calling out billionaires, talking about you know, there's a point where there's too much. Somebody's got too much wealth. Really? It's it's, it's just he's. If anybody can do it. <laughs>